What is going on everyone? It is Foul Play here. And we're back again here today. We're actually doing a modern preliminary here today. And um, I've decided to uh, mess around with my list a little bit again. I like, I just can't help but like tinker every now and then. Try different things out. Um, I've been finding that we are like pretty well positioned against like burn, meta, mostly shadow as well. Uh, so I'm actually going for a pathless list here today. So no path to exile. Um, so in this place, I'm basically bringing in Cartouche of Solidarity. Um, I'm going to go into it in a bit, but uh, we're, we're going to try and beat these Esper decks. I'm going to throw that out there. Esper's a big problem for us with that Kai's Guile. Two in the main deck, another two in the sideboard, four in the 75. Uh, it's really bad for us, really, really bad for us. Um, but that's all good. All right. So I've got my stock land base here that I've been running for a very long time. I think it's pretty much just the generic go-to land base for Bogles at the moment. I've got, of course, our four fetches, our uh, four temple gardens, our four razor verge thickets and canopies, and then the two plains, the one forest, and the one dry arbor. Uh, I could see an argument to go up to like one or two extra fetches, maybe, uh, possibly over. <coughs> A temple garden or a basic uh, just to like really help emphasize like sentinel's eyes um, and getting that escape for free particularly uh, because I'm running Lurus as a companion in this league or this preliminary as well um, it's not going to be so good to exile your auras or your creatures you pretty much just want to exile land to enable it um, it's something that's been on my eye for a while but it's not bugged me enough that I've actually changed to do it at the same time um, mostly because, uh, against like a hate bears deck, it's pretty bad having lots of fetch lands. All right. So of course we've got our eight creatures, four of the scout, uh, four of the bogle. We've got the three core spirit dancers here as well. Uh, I was running like two, I'm not really in love with four at the moment, so I'm just going to be running three. I love to draw it. I love it as a creature, a draw engine, all of that. It's a great value, powerful card. Realistically, it just gets removed or bounced or tapped or like, it just doesn't live. Uh, there's just too much hate for it in modern at the moment, in my opinion, to go super hard on it. Um, so yeah, as we said, we're bringing in three cartouche of solidarity. Uh, it's first strike, enters, gives you a soldier token, 1-1 one, one first strike. Also, only enchants a creature you control, so it gets around spell scout too. Not that relevant in the metagame at the moment, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, for Ethereal Armor, of course, for a 1-1 one, one uh, for each enchantment you control and the first strike. I got the 3 Griff Spoon in here for the flying, that evasiveness. You can return it from the graveyard for 4. Less relevant at the moment now that like Chalice has fallen off post Simeon Spirit Guide 8 banning. Uh, I've dropped down to 3 Hyena Umbra here. Um, I did have like 2 Path to Exile in the list and... I think like six instances of totem armor is probably going to be enough most of the time um, in those bad matchups. Uh, so I've just like got the third cartouche for like what would have been the fourth hyena umbra. I think that's like a fine trade off here. Um, so we still have like six ways to block flying creatures as well, which probably not the most relevant, but again, it's nice. Uh, Sentinel's eyes as a three of, so that's an extra three sources of vigilance. We've got, I guess, seven in the deck here now. Got the trample here with Rancor. That's of course a four of the four of Daybreak Coroner, of course, uh, three, three first strike vigilance lifelink and the two spirit mantle uh, for one, one protection from creatures. So with like the Griff Spoon and the Spirit Mantle, we have like five hard evasive effects essentially, and then like the Rancor is like another pseudo evasive effect. Although, like, yeah, it's some, sometimes like Rancor is going to be better, sometimes Griff Spoon is going to be better. It's going to depend whether or not your opponent has flying creatures or not, right? All right. So, sideboard wise, uh, so we had like a big talk with the Pirate Pete um post stream on thursday actually um and he's like a big advocate he's been bugging me for a while he wants containment priest in the deck so uh as you can see here containment priest a two mana creature uh with flash for a 2-2 two -two body if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile it instead um, so we sort of had a discussion. It has like relevance against hate bears would be the major one Most people would know off of their ether vial off of their uh, flicker wisp 
flickering like their Skyclave Apparition, we can get rid of that thing permanently. That would be really, really nice to blow them out with that. I'm like very keen to try it out. Um, also applicability uh, against the likes of um, a Heliod Company, which has uh, has Collected Company in it, has Captain Ranger of Eos, which I guess that like searches the library, so it doesn't really affect that. That's more of a uh, torpor op thing. But yeah, the the uh, shutting down the Collected Company should be pretty nice, uh, as opposed to like Gadok Teague in that situation, which is on the battlefield and your opponent knows about it. Your opponent's going to tap out four mana here, and then you're going to respond and blow them out. So, like, they can't play around it if they don't know about it, right? Uh, we've still got the Deicide in here as a one-of for Heliod combo as well. We get to exile all their Heliods from their deck, so that should be pretty fun too. Um, all right, so we've got Damping Sphere here as well. Uh, Tron Hate and uh, Prowess Hate, basically. Uh, now, here's my other bit of hate for Esper. We're bringing back Surgical Extraction. Um, I've versed the matchup a bit, and, like, I, I don't know. Like, I've been complaining probably for, like, a month now about, like, hey, you can kind of beat, like, one Kaya's Guile, but if you have to face two or more Kaya's Guile, you're just, like, dead. All meanwhile, I didn't think to bring, like, Surgical Extraction back into the deck. So we're bringing Surgical Extraction back into the deck. Oh, looks like my league match has just actually started on my preliminary match. Got the Soul Guide Lantern in there as well. And then two Force of Vigor, four Leyline, and the Lurus. All right, let's jump across. Looks like my opponent uh, won the die roll. So uh, that means they're going to be on the play. We're going to be on the draw. Hopefully it's not going to matter too much. Um... Hands keep. Uh, what are we doing here? I want to lock that one up over this way. All right, that's a bit nicer. Try to get some sort of continuity between my uh, two different formats. Yeah, it'll Sentinel. All right, we're versing elves. Elves is like pretty bad for us. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, we don't, like, have any hard-hitting auras in this hand either. We don't have Ethereal Armor. We don't have Rancor to push damage. We don't have, like, Flying either. Um, also, we're not running any removal. This might be a bit awkward for us. I uh, really wish I could block that. Somehow, like, blow him out. So, like, Nettle Sentinel doesn't untap during his untap step, but it does untap when he casts a green spell. So, uh, he's just setting up to untap it here. All right, well, Daybreak's a good find. Uh, let's just go ahead and cast a double aura. Guess we can just commit these uh, tokens to the board for now. They're going to make good blockers later on. Maybe we can attack with them next turn, but that's pretty unlikely. Good blockers until they get Trample. Trample from Azuri. All right, there's the Archdruid. I mean, that's not, like, crazy powerful or anything. I mean, like, hell yeah, I'll trade off these tokens right now before he has Trample. That's absolutely fine with me. These, like, Cartouche stopped six damage there. Like, that seems really, really good. All right, so now we can Daybreak Coronet. And the Rancor. So it's a big attack for eight. I mean, we've drawn, like, very well this game. We might actually be in with a chance. Having said that, they could go off pretty hard with the Elvish uh, Archdroid this turn. Elvish Visionary. It all starts here. All right. So creature enters. They get this thing. So, like, elves, like, also transition to be, like, more of a warrior tribe deck as well. Um... Or, like, some of the builds have. And it's, like, more ETB and counter-based. If you see something like that. This is just, like, great value because it just gives them an extra freaking creature per creature. So it's, like, pretty strong for them. Alright, well, might as well start off with the Horizon Canopy Cycle. We're going to fetch the planes first to do that.
Dex on my radar, probably not this one. Anything relevant, evasive aura? Not an evasive aura, but like power and toughness still. Okay. Well, they're gonna have to block with something, but the problem is they're gonna have like a big counter attack. Um, so like, obviously Heritage draw down now as well. The next turn is like the big important turn for our opponent. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have flying or protection from creatures. The best we have is Rancor here. Uh, that's not gonna cut it most likely. Collected company. Sure. If he wants to get in like a whole black blocking match, I, I would take like killing three, four creatures for um, him not being able to attack with those things. Looks like he finds Nettle Sentinel and Shaman of the Pact. Shaman of the Pact with a big trigger here. Uh, he can give uh, plus and death touch. Uh, looks like he's uh, playing it sort of smart and uh, he's going to just go to one. He's not going to overblock and then he's going to look for that big attack. Here, basically, we want to block the Arch Druid if he attacks with it because that will shrink all his other creatures before damage. His first strike damage will happen first. All right, so more elves. These shouldn't be able to get haste, so maybe they're like trying to draw another Lord or something. Uh, realistically, we're in like a fair bit of trouble. Opponent can like tap these creatures that entered as well. Um, and use them to get mana for uh, this activation. It's like a seven mana activation, but they've definitely got the mana to do it. Oh, they've got Azuri as well. We're like super dead. I imagine. Really, they're going for the seven power thing. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he knows he knows what I want to block here. Knows exactly where I want to block. Well, we're probably going to like negative 40 or something. Uh, you can also activate this, add like freaking 20 more mana. Do like another bunch of actives. Uh, we're like just super, super dead. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, we don't really care about uh, losing our totem army here, but like we, we care about the rest of what's going on over this side. It's like negative 100 or something. All right, negative 109. Let's go. Oh, uh, well, that's super awkward. Um, <laughs> as I said, not a great matchup. Containment Priest might be able to get their collected company. The problem is, like, do we want to hold the mana up? Uh, it's uh, probably a strong no. Bring in, like, Damping Sphere as well. That's okay. I'll probably race him with Spirit Dancer. Leilana Sanctity will stop the Shaman of the Packs, like, drain life trigger will stop us from losing life because it does read target opponent uh, but I don't think it stops them from gaining life we even cashed in our two cartouche tokens like super early and it didn't matter uh, so we're looking at maybe four cards in honestly I think damping sphere is probably the stronger effect here if we can like really slow down them ramping like crazy that's probably enough um, and I also don't think we really want to go crazy with overboarding here either. It's minus like a cartouche and probably a spider umbra. Oh, uh, it's minus two spider umbras and keep the cartouche. 
All right, so game number two. Match one, game two. Beautiful. All right, well, our deck's just doing this rubbish to us again where we mulligan to like very few resources. Uh, I have a strong feeling that we're just gonna get slapped here. So I said like, you, you might think elves is a good matchup, but they're just that turn faster than us and it's actually very, very relevant. All right, we'll keep like a guy. Ditch this, uh, we'll probably want our totem armor. Ditch the cartouche. Like good auras, but the most critical thing will be hitting land and then the next most critical thing will be hitting evasiveness. We're not going to win this match if we miss our land drop. Can't even be close. Our opponent also has access to Reclamation Sage post board, which is very annoying. From turn two. All right, well, we draw about as amazingly as we uh, we drew our sevens, actually. Uh, so, you know, that's that's pretty good, eh? <laughs> All right, guy, guy, more guys, more mana. Yeah, I mean, like, we have a turn two hyena umbra. They have a turn two five creatures, like, rip. All right, get that Rancor down now. Wear the beat down. Try to be the beat down. I mean, honestly, like, maybe we just leave back blocks. It's really bad against Reclamation Sage, though. I smell big mana. Rip. <laughs> they never didn't have, like, all their most important creatures, did they? Alright, let's do some sort of desperate attempt to block, but we're, like, super fucked. Oh, man. Shaman, and I don't care anymore. All right, well, we're out of this one. We lost game one. That one sucks. Good times. All right, well, on to the next one shortly, everyone. All right, so here we are for match number two, everyone. Uh, we're seeing Little Masters and uh, won the Daryl on the play. Hopefully it's not a really fast, uninteractive combo deck. Fingers crossed. All right, I think we keep this. Like, the Bogle on its own is gonna... The, the Bogle and these Auras are gonna need some help, but we've got, like, double Core Spirit Dancer to help get shit going, so... Seems pretty good. Let's Creature go. Valakut. It's a Titan deck, so it's one of the rare situations where I think I go in on the Spirit Dancer here and try to rush my opponent. No, turn one amulet means... I, I don't know, they'd have to have something ridiculous for Core Spirit Dancer to die here. And if it does, we have a second one, but I mean, that's probably going to die too. Um, <laughs> they get to the stage where Valakut's online, somehow on turn two. I mean, if they do that here, does that make this deck ban worthy? I don't know. Oh god, it's the Reclaimer version with Path to Exile? Come on, man. Fucking come on, man. <sighs> you know what? We drew some good auras. Let's just go hard. There I was, expecting a nice friendly Amulet Titan, and instead we got this damned Reclaimer Titan. Mine did fetch a shock to do that though, so they like took three damage last turn anyway, so it's like reasonable attack is like three to four damage, right? Five 
damage like turn two attack is like a good one so we still dealt like one damage so it's essentially like they took four damage from it i mean i guess i'll take one damage no matter what though and there's the dryad all right we draw a one mana aura here we win Not a one mana aura. Pretty close though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we just put them to one and if they've got a fetch land then, you know, we're keeping them honest. They now don't have an option to block Slippery Bogle. And even if they somehow get like a blast zone or something into play this turn and crack it for one our totem armor will activate and we'll still be able to attack through with two unblockable so not sure how they're gonna do this The old uncrackable fetch. It can still tap for mana, though. The power of the sexual dryad. Dryad's sexual powers at work. Sure. Trigger totem armor. But it's randomly got fucking supreme verdict in his uh, dryad deck. This this makes it like a four color omnac. Omnath deck with like the two Jace and the Teferis and yeah yeah that's what we're versing I mean it's a replacement effect man <laughs> opponent concedes let's go cool um well that was interesting our opponent essentially ramped us into going wild right that's what I'm gonna go with um, I don't know if there's much we want in this matchup, like Path to Exile would be okay against an Omnath, but we can't really go that. Uh, this Force of Vigor hits Dryad of Elysian Grove, that's reasonable, same with like Deicide, but might not hit like the Engineered Explosives or something. Um... I don't really think Damping Sphere is going to go that well. They're not running Reclaimer. That was a uh, misread on my part. Cool Spirit Dance is probably quite fragile, but it might be good to leave in there as something to go back in on if everything goes wrong. I might cut a Cartouche of Solidarity because I really like the idea of um having my six Totem Armors in here. We know how good Sentinel's Eyes is against uh, Force... Of Vigor. Alright, well, we can, like, keep this, but it's a bit aura light. We are on the draw, so we are, like, more likely to draw cards. We do start the game, essentially, a card up, a turn late. Let's see what happens. Go on, explosives on one. Let's go. <laughs> we got it. We got this covered. <clears throat> Oh, no explosives on one, so that's uh, that's probably a good thing, really. Let's, let's all be real. Uh, kind of hope, like, I draw an aura which isn't Spider Umbra here. I don't like running out multiple instances of totem armor in the same turn. That's better. That is much better. Keep the Spider Umbra in hand so that we can have uh, Force of Vigor live. We can kill, like, sneak a kill on Dryad of Lysian Grove. That should be pretty nice. We'll, of course, play out our Rancor here because it's the best against the yeah, Force of Vigor. Cool. No interaction. There could be, like, a Teferi Bounce here. Um, it's, like, a pretty common line for these decks. Opponents not even got that. So, like, what's the play? Remand? Mana Leak? I feel like I don't want to just throw away this 
Daybreak, Coronet. Let's go for attacks. Let's put Lurus to hand. It seems like the most mana efficient thing to do at this point. Our opponent's not really got a good clock. We've got pretty good resilience here as well. And yeah, I don't want to like just play into his open mana there. That seems bad. Oh, Flagstones of Trakar. They do have Dried of Lucian Grove. I'm getting confused. Sorry, they do have Reclaimer. Oh, opponent. No, not like this. That's what my, uh, that's what we were talking about. Um, the, uh, containment priest stops madcap experiment as well. Let's, uh, get rid of this bad boy now. Ditch the excess bogle. Hey, look, we draw a rancor. Let's, uh, let's keep the good times rolling. Attack for nine. Could like wait an extra turn, I suppose, and have a bit more power on the board when we go for all this. Um, but like, we're just best off making him have the second madcap experiment as opposed to playing into counter magic. Looks like we get the win here. Um, I don't think like madcap experiment is good in what you want to be doing. Like if you're a dried of Elysian Grove deck and you're bringing in an artifact when your opponents could be boarding enchantment destruction in, which is like massive overlap a lot of the time. Uh, it seems like maybe a little bit greedy to me, but I'm not going to complain. We do get the W. Um, we'll move on to the next one shortly. All right, here we are for match number three, you guys. Uh, we won the die roll and are on the play versus Kazuga. And is good, let's go. And snap it up. But it has mulligan to six and what happens next? Five. Oh, yikes. I'd swear he was on Bogles. You see, I say all of this, and then we're versing a Dredge or Btron. Hopefully Dredge, we have, like, a very good game against Dredge here, and against Tron, they probably just randomly win off of some stupidly powerful card. So, they've kept a five. We're on the play. Like, the play is so important in, like... A matchup like this, where uh, they're doing pretty busted shit. Oh, is this a mirror? Ah, uh, it's just Heliod? Fuck. <laughs> well, that's less exciting. Come on, man. I like, I say it's hella odd, but like someone was asking me like why I don't play uh, Utopia Sprawl in my Bogles deck. Maybe it's the viewer. <laughs> I did explain to them though that uh, although it's played in Pauper, it's not really adequate for modern to like waste a turn to gain a mana, right? Pauper deck also plays like significantly like crazy amount of basic forests, right? Hella odd. Can somebody say spike feeder for a free win? All right, get in there, boys. We do have the kill next turn if we get to next turn. Mmm. Mmm. Yay! Wizards, do something about this shit fucking card. We literally have everything go for right, right for us, but because we're not a turn three deck, we just lose. Cool. Uh, well, we're going to try Containment Priest here. It does stop Collected Company. Uh, Deicide, obviously dedicated hate here, and Damping Sphere sort of does stuff as well. Um, like I would feel so good about going in on Core Spirit Dancer there until like I saw the Utopia Sprawl and then it's like, hey, look, Skyclave Apparition just ruins our day. Maybe I just like keep him honest, make him have the Skyclave Apparition there. Um, 
But yeah, obviously that's not what I went for and we were turned too slow. I think we would have like fallen a damage or two short, although they did hurt themselves with Horizon Canopy a few times, so maybe not. Uh, Damping Sphere doesn't actually do anything here. I don't know why I brought that in. Uh, I, oh, wait, that's right. I thought, I think I thought it was Torpor Orb. Okay. So we're looking at Containment Priest and Deicide, and I guess Containment Priest could just be an efficiency swap for Spirit Dancer. And... Maybe we just minus a Cartoose of Solidarity. Uh, no, no. Yeah, seems about right. Actually, I like Spider Umbra is probably a better card to remove if we get the time, but no, we're already in. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, like, it's a great start for Bogles. It doesn't really do shit against Heliod, though. Turn three, Heliod, turn... Oh, sorry, turn two, Heliod, turn three, infinite life. I just don't know why they had to print that fucking card, man. As if, like, Devoted Devastation wasn't bad enough, like... I don't know, I, I should probably be mulliganing this, but, like, I have a turn to attack for four, and that's, like, a good thing for our deck. I, it's, like, absolutely nothing for our opponent who, like, turn three's a heliod, but hey. Maybe we'll rip that one off day aside and make for an actual, like, interactive game after that. All right, so, you know, we, of course, draw land for turn. 20 land deck. Always hit it when we don't. Never hit it when we need it. <clears throat> oh boy, he's just like wasting no time here. All right, goodbye, Griff Spoon. Goodbye, Clock. The wonderful thing here is, like, we have literally no other auras in hand, so we can't actually attack this turn either. How is this a choice? Oh, fuck. Like, e either thing he takes is bad, but I guess he's weighing up whether or not I have, like, a follow-up aura next turn. Taking Grisburn is, like, just way better. But he's respecting that we have something and is going after the clock there. All right. Well, let's attack for two. We've got a containment priest for like, you know, Coco's. It probably, uh, <laughs> probably they don't have it. And then we just cycle Horizon Canopy. Uh, they're going straight away for that fetch. Uh, so I guess they have Coco. Well, uh,. Pirate John, let's see how good your tech is, my friend. Let's see. Collected company, four mana, do nothing here. All right, I'm listening, I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Looks about right. And like Griff Spoon double fly. Eh. Let's Horizon Canopy. Pretend we're holding up interaction. We can cycle Horizon Canopy end step. And then next turn we can steal Spirit Dancer plus Boon and like utilize our mana efficiently. Mm. What we want to see is like more Cocos, right? <laughs> he needs like four Cocos in hand, right? <laughs> I will just take this. He's down on nine. Like, we've pressured him okay. All right, Captain Ranger is annoying because of that active. A Conclave Mentor too. Mm. Gross stuff. 
All right. When the world needed him most, Daybreak Coronet arrived. What have got? Four here. Seven damage in total. We're one short. Well, that's lame. Um... This is probably just dying to Walking Ballista next turn. If he's doing that, can he do that and Heliod at the same time? I don't think so. Alright, I think we just cast our auras on the Bogle and look to kill over two turns because we can't kill this turn. Wait, did I miscount a damage? Where did I miscount damage? I counted Daybreak plus Griff Spoon is adding three. I had lethal then. That's so stupid. All right. You can tell it's been the end of a long week and I'm tired. Jeez. Good job, Val. Good job. <laughs> Get like a rip in the uh, comment section down below for that one, people. Uh, that's a big feels bad. Heliod, sure. Tax has access to two mana. Uh, block the Captain Ranger of Eos. Sure. And they can see. All right. We got lucky. We played that badly. We blew them out with Conclave Mentor. I'm not sure if we're going to be that fortunate again. Let's do the very least thing of getting rid of Spider Umbra for the Griff Spoon there. Oh, that was a one of course, Spirit Dancer as well. Um, yeah, let's, like, run that list. Alright, so opponent miles to six. We see this seven. Which honestly isn't awful. I'm gonna keep it. Like, we're fucked against, like, his strategy. Him going off, but... We have a good clock. We have a good variety of auras. We have an evasive effect. We, like, yeah, ethereal armor for the clock. We have vigilance. Opponent miles to five. But yeah, he's terrified of that, uh, that containment priest now. He's, he's just gonna throw these collected companies in the bin. Where they belong. Oh, Dredge. Dredge is a good matchup for a containment priest, actually. There I was complaining about him mulliganing. Uh, I'd be okay with that, right? Uh, turn one Utopia Sprawl. Get ready for that triple mana. Hmm. I mean, we have, like, great hand tempo, like, great tempo in hand here at the moment. We just need to curb out at this point. Really, really important. Oh. Oh. Opponent with not much there. Okay. All right, well, let's slow down some uh, effects and attack. Might have been correct to Spider Umbra there over the Sentinel's eyes, actually. I think he's going to go after the Cartouche anyway, because first strike's kind of important. We don't currently have evasiveness. This is like collected company. It's okay for us. See exactly what it looks like. Okay, well, whiff. <laughs> I call for the whiff. He'll hit the nut. Oh my god, yeah, cool. Well, like, that doesn't win shit for you here. I'm just not going to concede yet. Alright, so opponent decided to waste, like, 10 minutes of our time when I literally told him if I don't draw die side, I'll, my day side, I'll scoop. And there they were anyway, jerking off for several hours while being passive-aggressive to me. So shout out to Kazuga for being a complete douche nozzle. Uh, but yeah, that puts us one and two, and, uh, you know, we can still fight for that, uh, two and two prize slot. It's a four match thing, so see you shortly for the next round. Alright, so match number four, people. We won the die roll. Good start. Uh, hand is, like, great if we hit our second land drop. I think we keep. 
I know an opponent, like, no companion or anything either. Yeah, even if we don't hit, um, and land drop on turn two, like, still just, like, Rancor attack for three isn't the worst. And then we can throw down our first strike and go after that. Alright, so let's get into it. Looks like my opponent did keep their seven. Old guy yield, and what are we facing? Alright, so it's like the Bant or Four Colored Snow deck. Alright, we can kick things off with Rancor and get that clock happening. Now this deck does run uh, some number of like On Thin Ice to enable Ice Fang Quattle's Death Touch. Definitely going to want to be resolving a first strike effect next turn if we can. Uh, I don't want this to get like counterspelled or something. Let's just go for the lesser first strike effect here. I think they do have like one supreme verdict in the list, maybe. Sucks we missed our land drop uh, two turns in a row though. Still, I think we're like possible to actually do okay in this spot as well. Um, it's probably end of turn Ice Fang. Yeah, draw a card. What we really want to see is just mana so we can curve into the remainder of our auras because at the moment we've like destroyed our own tempo a lot. Or Frost Augur. The top card of your library, if it's snow card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. The moment it just looks like blue green snow. I was like assuming that it was like the Bant snow deck. It's now got death touch by the way. They're attacking with it. Amazing. All right, well, that's still like a good aura to draw because we should have our opponent dead uh, on the next attack after this one. So this just looks like a snow deck. Um, I'm assuming it's kind of janky. Another Ice Fang, sure. Like, even if they start to stabilize and, like, slow the game down here with Cryptic Commands or something, we're still on 16 life and they can attack for a maximum of 3 a turn. Like, I think, uh, I think we're fine. Ah, Mirit Large Slumber, right. So, enters the battlefield. Or another snow permanent enters the battlefield, scry one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, sacrifice it. Create a 2020 black avatar thingy. Okay. Uh, Thurial armor. Attack for a million. Uh, looks like there's some sort of a response here. Ooh, ooh. Snow covered swamp. Opponent can uh, pop the rancor and chump block. Ah, it's very sneaky. Or just pop the rancor and die because you take a damage from your prismatic vista. Am I missing something? I guess I'm not missing anything. Cool, that was weird. Um, okay. 
It's like possibility for an opponent to have thought seize. Uh well, so Vega destroys Merit Ledge Slumber. At the moment, we know Sultai colors. Potential for Leyline to be good. Containment Priest just shuts down Merit Ledge Slumber, right? This feels like overboarding at this point, just a lot. Uh, we can also exile Merit Ledge Slumber with Deicide. Uh, I sort of feel like Grispoon's pretty weak. We can probably remove two to three copies of that. I also kind of expect Snapcaster Mage here as well. I don't think I want to play around it though. Uh, it seemed like it was a bit like splashing black, so maybe he doesn't have like term on discard, right? Could minus the Spirit Dancer and. Minus a cartouche. Seems good. All right, good old no lander. So we'll start the game on not seven. <laughs> Look at like the, the, the cards in our hand aren't even that good. Like we've got triple creature. <laughs> it's not like it's a completely stack of auras or anything. All right, we got a turn to containment priest and not much. All right, Mulligan. Opponent keeping a seven as well. All right, we'll keep this one. Bottom this land, bottom. Vigilance, probably least important card here. Might get blown out by like, um, some counter magic and not be able to cast anything, but uh, we'll go for it. Uh, okay, we hit our land, go team. The reason I kept uh, the Windswept Teeth there, by the way, was in case he thought seized my creature, I could dry it Arbor. Doesn't look like it's relevant, though. Alright, opponent holding up Abrupt Decay mana. Good find. Do I have to play around... Like, the best thing he can do is, here is Ambush Viper. I might want to play around Liliana of the Veil, vale, though. Uh, I think I'm going to cast nothing because I don't want to give him free abrupt decay and then if he like holds up the mana it makes his next turn pretty awkward potentially. So sort of like giving my opponent a read that I have a two mana aura in hand. Uh, this is just like the toxic deluge, the snow one. He can just like snow toxic deluge. Can't really get my power above it, is the issue. I can't get my power above it and play around Abrupt Decay, I should say. I can like lure us to hand here, or, or I can like cartouche and bait. The downside to lure us to hand is it shuts off my like dried arbor and I take a bit of damage. I think I'd go for it. Go for that Lurus to hand. Uh, I should be doing this post combat by the way. I might not even attack here. He can like just Ice Fang block. All right, let's just Lurus to hand and that's it. I don't think he'd keep a seven without like pretty good interactional blowout here. Um. I think, like, the Snow Toxic Deluge does damage, like, or neg eggs to non-snow creatures as well. I think it's, like, completely busted. But it is a sorcery. Ogre Frost, yeah. More land. Okay. I can like triple or get my power to three. I'm still getting like nega million. And I think I'm like beating that at this point. Let's just commit some auras. I 
yeah, let's like commit some sort of a clock here. See if we can bait like the Assassin's Trophy Abrupt Decay stuff. Because now he's got this Frost Augur on the battlefield, he's going to just generate manu um, value every turn. Um, okay. There's like a chance I played like a little bit too conservative this game. But I had a pretty strong read on like the Snow Toxic Deluge. Um, is that like Dead of Winter, I think it's called? Dead of Winter is like still really good here at like three for ones us, and then we can lure us in some stuff. Um, obviously, we're saving our Daybreak Coronet for a good reason. Currently, seven snow permanents for our opponent. All right, here comes Ascendant Spirit. What's the go? Are we puff pumping it? I think, like, maybe they can. I don't know. Uh, didn't they activate this? So I guess they missed on a snow card. Maybe they had, like, Abrupt Decay on top or something. Snowland in tapped. Sure. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so opponent can literally play the, the slumber, mirror slumber, and like kill us here. So let's just ignore it. There's like a possibility we can actually beat the Merit uh, Slumber as well, the Merit Large token. Uh, if my opponent has Abrupt Decay on my Daybreak though, that's going to be very upsetting. I guess he could also go after the Spirit Mantle, which might actually be better than he jump blocks. He's like a little while away from his snow thing anyway. Hmm. Interesting. I was like so excited when I saw this Ascendant Spirit spoiled and like the fact that you can do it instant speed and stuff is kind of nice. It's just like very constricted to a snow deck. All right, so it's my warrior for essentially free, but we get in for eight. We force the issue on our opponent. What's he got now? He can go land and that like Merit Slumber, get a big flying token, but then he needs to deal with our Spirit Mantle. All meanwhile, we can attack and gain a lot of life with Daybreak and just leverage our Spider Umbra. All right, there's the good stuff. Assassin's Trophy. Let's hide some information and uh, get that one on down. Pretend like we only have two basics in the deck is uh, what I'm going for here. Frost Dog are active. Why do you do that after Assassin's Trophy? Don't you do that before? He's got the Tree Folk. Tree Folk gets pretty fat. Um, Dead of Winter. Yeah, I was sort of expecting the Dead of Winter. Uh, so Tree Folk to hand. Attacking for a Chunky. All right. Umbra, day, uh, Ethereal, Pass, Power of Lurus, we're still in the game. I knew we had Dead of Winter, like, it just fell off, man. Now it could be like one blow up effect, we can't beat like a second Dead of Winter or something. Oh, Dead of Winter isn't snow. It's not like a snow sorcery or anything, it's just a sorcery. He breaks on the Frost Aura for the second time in three activations. That's kind of good for us. Tree Folk, sure. Good old 
12 power tree folk. <laughs> My creature doesn't untap. <laughs> All right, calm down, opponent. <laughs> Uh, is this tree folk gonna kill us? What's the go here? We take four. We go to 14. Got like lethal, so we can cartouche and put up a chump blocker. Or we can like just glade cover scout and block with that and he can't like tap it down or something. I guess we go for that. We can randomly leave this temple garden in hand to pretend something. Man, this taps down a creature for a turn. That's so stupid. <laughs> Fucking 12 12 parent toughness equal to snow. We're getting slapped by some jank here. And we're laughing about it. Oh, alright. They get a snow land. All right, what are we going for? Level up. So four, four, warrior angel with flying. Gotcha. I think we might go ahead and block this one. Does our opponent know about this spirit mantle in the grave? What's going on? Oh, it's got trample, right? Okay, well. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> I missed that wording. Our line didn't matter, I suppose. All right, so he's got that. We didn't see any discard. Containment Priest really does. Like it can stop the Mirror at Large token, but I think we can race that. That's pretty slow. Bring in some more auras. What else did I sideboard in here? Force of Vigor? Eh. I think like Containment Priest is probably better than Force of Vigor. Can stop like multiple effects instead of one and doesn't just die to Dead of Winter. Let's like leave in the Containment Priest, I reckon. Yeah, we'll submit that. Okie dokie. What do we got to work with? This has got a good clock. It doesn't... I think I'd have a better clock if we had Vigilance though on the... Because turn two we can attack. We, we probably need to attack for two. We probably need to give Spider Umbra. Eh, it just seems risky. Cool. Missing that seven. Missing that seven. <laughs> Opponent has mulligan to six. We'll see if he goes further. We know we are. We go into that juicy four. <clears throat> Good four beats whatever the hell this is. Keep. Bottom. 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 Done. All right, let's go. Show me tempo. Show me land. One land. Yeah. Get in there for some juicy two points. We might be able to keep our power and toughness above his snow permanence. Um, play around Dead of Winter. Um, you can play two mana creature here. Is this Quailing Oracle or are we going for something else? We're going for holding up Abrupt Decay. You got it. Uh, so it might be a bit hard to play around. If we're going to lose our Ethereal Armor, it's too hard to play around. Uh, we'll just go for the clock line though. The only line we've got. If I had Ethereal Armor in hand, I could like slow roll it for post combat and then have four power and toughness uh, and like survive an extra turn. But because I played Ethereal Armor turn one, that's not going to fly.
Like we needed snow toxic deluge in modern. <laughs> okay. Are we raging? We're not raging yet. Okay. All right, beats by scout. Get in there, buddy. All right, and we'll lure us to hand. At least we can be mana efficient with stuff there. That's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, save Lurus for later on. There's no point playing it into removal. Uh, attacks. So opponent just like waiting to get maximum value here because he hasn't like played anything else. Ice Fang, sure. I mean, he can block and interrupt tempo, but that's not amazing. We have first strike. I don't think his life is like low enough that he wants to cash that in. I guess we could hit Trample or Spirit Mantle, like rank or Spirit Mantle, and then what he did was fine. So I guess I guess there's an argument for it then. You got the, like, Dead of Winter, you just cast it, right? Ah, oh, the zombie thing. Other zombies get 1-1. One, one. Return it. Tap from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. That, uh... That can block for a turn or two, I suppose. Uh, I still value Lurus over Spirit Dancer, um, even with like mana efficiency here. We've seen like an Abrupt Decay and we've seen an Assassin's Trophy. Uh, so he could be running a split and he might only have one Abrupt Decay for like a control matchup or something. So if we like get ramped on land, we can get our Ethereal Armor for free anyway. Spirit, sure. Cool, let's go. Always yes, going in on the scout. I, this is like way too fragile here. Now it's tempting. I guess we'll just get a power of toughness way out of like dead of winter range. Okay, we do have a kill next turn. So we force the block. I shouldn't attack with Core Spirit Dancer. If he's got the uh, Ice Fang Quattle, then uh, it just dies. It's tempting to attack for Swagger there, but uh, yeah, not not going to do that. We've changed our mind. All right, the power of Core Spirit Dancer, people. Still, I don't feel comfortable going in on it. Maybe that's a weakness in my game, uh, but there is just so much done removal these days. I think given like matchups, if I had like two totem armor effects, there's a pretty good argument to go in on Spirit Dancer with those totem armors. Now for opponent with slow rolling the dead of winter there, um probably a little bit punished in that spot. Yeah. Things. I like the fact they can activate this instant speed. It makes it slightly less awful. As opposed to like the normal level up system though, you can't like do partial things. Like so you can't pay like one mana return to level up. It's like, it starts at two, but transforms to a two, three. So you're looking for like a three mana two, three then. And then for six mana, you get a four, four flyer. It's like a little, little bit questionable. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get in there. Keep a little bit of information secret. Prop decay. So and we can get it back with Lurus. We've been slow rolling the heck out of this Lurus, so we can do that. Uh, we have unblockable opponent, 
So I assume you have the Abrupt Decay, the Assassin's Trophy. Hmm. No. All right, well, we'll just get the win. So that's like a two and two. I mean, it's not like amazing, but it's not awful. Uh, so what we'll end up with when it comes through is 10 qualifier points. That's not too bad. 150 play points and one treasure booster. So we don't really get our entry back of like 300 play points. We get half that. And I guess we weren't like even, so that's reasonable. Um... But yeah, it's a shame we've asked, like, two pretty bad matchups in Heliod and Elves. And it's actually a really big shame against Elves that he had the play on game one. Uh, because we actually would have won if we were on the play, interestingly enough. Um, and against, like, that Heliod opponent, I mean, like, come on, man. Like, he fucking ripped like a god off of two collected companies, game one and three. And, um, like, that... that he literally played nothing game three and then collected company into that. And then was like being a passive aggressive little bitch. I like literally said like, look, there's no point. I'm not killing you on damage. I know that. I understand that. You have more cards in your deck than I do. I can still technically deck you. Like if I deicide exile Heliod, you can't infinite damage me. And he's like, no, nah, I still just win. And then he started being passive aggressive, like continuously off screen. Um, so yeah, shout out to that dude. Uh, what do we think of the deck though? Um, so moving away from all that fun stuff. Mm. So like, I mean, we ran into elves, so that's, that's like just a glaring matchup where not having path to exile is very detrimental. Um, I feel like this league, we really could have just done without any Leyline of Sanctities and we could have like upped our other sideboard numbers, maybe had some Torpor Orbs, maybe had some Path to Exile, something like that. Um, I was like umming and ahhing whether or not I wanted to run Leyline in the event and given the decks we versed, like, I mean, obviously didn't go amazingly. Like even then it was what, like a 23 man tournament, like whoop de doo um, <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's not, like, a big, uh, big tournament or anything, though. Um, Damping Sphere really didn't do anything. We didn't see Burn, we didn't see Prowess, we didn't see Storm, we didn't see Tron. I think, like, what, four cards are dedicated to Tron, kind of? Yeah. I guess, like, two cards properly dedicated there and a bit of Splash. I, I, I made the judgment call to remove Gadok Teague here. I don't know, like, it hasn't really been doing it for me recently. Just hasn't felt as good, and like, Damping Sphere has felt good because it overlaps with Prowess and Storm, and although I don't much verse much Storm, I do verse a bit of Prowess, and like, this Damping Sphere will make it very hard for Prowess to, like, get their lethal stuff on you, apparently. It's freaking out again. Um, can we stop with whatever that is? Thank you. Uh... Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to just go like a Corliss build and try it out and see what I think. Because we could literally minus this core spirit these core spirit dances for Path to Exiles. And then we would have a good matchup against Elves there. We'd still be okay against Prowess because we'd have like Path to answer their creature. Um, like, can someone in the chat actually tell me what core spirit dancer is like good against? What matchup it's just like hard winning us. Like it's okay against Jund. Okay. And at the moment, like Jund is Jund Shadow for those Jund players. And it just the, the card advantage isn't there. It might get you a card for a removal spell. And like even then, it's probably eating a fatal push and then gonna save like their abrupt decay or assassin's trophy for your aura anyway so like is it really giving value i don't know i don't think so i think it's just like three mana sink like way too much stuff in i don't know maybe i'll test without that maybe i'll test without ley line yeah as if we get rid of ley line and spirit dancer here we'll just like do a little bit of a thing 
So yeah, we bring in the Path to Exile main deck for the Core Spirit Dancers. Uh, that's the, how the main deck looks. We get rid of the Ley Line in the sideboard. It's currently at 16 cards here, I know that. Uh, but we can bring in our Torpor Orbs, we can bring in our Suppression Fields, and we can have a much better, like, general balance against a majority of, like, different matchups. It makes us weaker to, like, Thoughtseize, a little bit weaker to, like, a Burn deck, like Boros Burn or something. It's so like, those matchups should be pretty reasonable anyway. Maybe we could look at having like some spirit links in the main deck or to the sideboard to make up for it as well. Uh, but like, I I'm really questioning Leyline at the moment, guys, as well as Core Spirit Dancer. Honestly, they're feeling like some of our worst effects. Um, so yeah, I think with this, you could choose between like one Suppression Field, two Torpor Orbs, or like no Soul Guide Lantern. Those are the things you can probably minus. I might much just like minus a Torpor Orb here for um, just like sake and have a think in between this and my next video. But definitely get in there in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think of the deck. Um, I'll be looking forward uh, to hearing from you. Let me know what your build is. Cheers, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.